Hello everyone, this is the Insert Title Show and I am your host, Wolf Strife. On this episode, I am going to be talking about my Cubic Fun 3D model of St. Peter's Basilica. I got into putting these models together about five years ago. The first one I ever put together was for the Colosseum. That was a, that was a pain in the ass, but the final product was pretty badass. So it was definitely worth doing and I had fun doing it. I've always kind of liked architecture and famous buildings and stuff, and I've always kind of liked putting things together. Like when I was a kid, I was always playing with Legos, and then when I got into my teens, I was always putting models together, like airplanes, tanks, and that kind of stuff. The only problem with models and me is that I really, really suck at painting. <laughs> like, I'm good at gluing things together, but when it comes to painting, eh, that's, uh, it's not too pretty. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I came across these models about five years ago, and I thought they looked really cool and pretty fun. Basically, they are two pieces of paper with graphics on them and a piece of polystyrene in the middle. It's like a foam, kind of almost like styrofoam, but much more tough and flexible. So these, uh, these models are actually pretty durable. I've accidentally knocked them over a few times onto the hardwood floor and uh, thankfully they were able to survive it. So yeah, these things are kind of durable and tough. But the best part about it is no painting, no gluing. All you have to do is just find the slots, put them together, and boom. A few hours later, you have a completed model. Yay! Except some of these can really take a long time. Like my first one, the Colosseum, took like nine hours. But that was probably because it was my first time and it really was a pain. <laughs> just trying to get all the columns to line up right and stuff is just ugh. But then again, some of these are kind of easy, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, I think only took me like an hour. And the same with the uh, Parthenon, but then you get some of the bigger sets, like um, yesterday I actually finished putting together my Hagia Sophia model. That, uh, that one wasn't as tough as I thought it was going to be, but it still took like 9 or 10 hours. Uh, St. Peter's actually took the longest. I think this one took me like 12 hours to put together. So, yeah. But it's, I mean, it's massive. I mean, look at this freaking thing. Kind of ridiculous me complaining about it taking 12 hours. The real St. Peter's Basilica took 120 years to build. So, looking at it that way, I guess it wasn't that bad. St. Peter's Basilica overall was pretty straightforward building it. There were mostly just straight lines and stuff, walls and all that kind of stuff that were pretty easy to do, but there were a lot of layers and add-ons with this model. Basically, they did that to, I guess, give it more of a 3D depth look to it and stuff, so that was kind of tricky, and the dome was a major pain in the butt. Yeah, the dome was very, very tricky. The facade wasn't too tough, but the colonnade was a pain in the ass because, like I said earlier, there was a lot of layering. So there's like three pieces that go in the colonnade to give it that depth look. So yeah, the colonnade was kind of a pain, but um, yeah, I mean, overall it wasn't that tough. But um, the cool thing about doing these models is, especially for me, it helps me learn more about the structure and just all the different areas and parts and just where everything is really like over here you've got michelangelo's dome that he designed and then over here you've got the facade that was designed by carlo madorno and then you've got bonini's colonnade and stuff so yeah, it's kind of interesting. Well, remember, this took 120 years to build. I mean, there were tons of people who worked on this and designed it. And just, I mean, it was crazy. You had some of the best artists during the Renaissance, pretty much all the great architects of the time. I mean, it's really crazy. Like, originally, the main architect was Donato Bramante, and he was hired by Pope Julius II, who was kind of the guy who got the whole thing going. Oddly enough, though, there was a old St. Peter's Basilica that was built by Constantine the Great, I guess in the 300s. So that actually stood for well over a thousand years, the original St. Peter's Basilica. 
And supposedly it was built on top of the tomb of St. Peter himself, who was one of the apostles of Jesus. So, yeah, kind of interesting. But, um, yeah, oddly enough, um, a lot of these buildings were built on top of other buildings, like the old St. Peter's Basilica was built on top of the Circus of Nero. And the reason why the early Christians picked the Circus of Nero to build their basilica you know, it's kind of a weird place, but the reason is that's where Peter was executed. According to Christian tradition, Peter was crucified upside down. They gave him a choice of, you know, how do you want to be executed? And he said crucifixion, but he wanted to be crucified upside down because he didn't feel like he was worthy enough to die the same way Jesus did. So, yeah, that was kind of interesting. And so when Christianity took over in the 300s as the religion of the Roman Empire, they decided to build their church on top of the spot where Peter was executed. So that's pretty interesting. And there has been some archaeological work done underneath St. Peter's Basilica, and they think they have found Peter's tomb, but there's really not enough evidence to say once and for all, this is Peter. But uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting that they picked that spot to build their basilica. Naturally, when in the late 1400s, when they were thinking about either rebuilding or repairing the old St. Peter's Basilica, naturally they were going to keep it in the same spot. Eventually, they decided to just tear down what remained of the old St. Peter's Basilica. It was basically just a ruin at that time. You know, nobody had been doing anything there for centuries, so, you know, they just basically knocked it over and started building the new one, which is kind of sad. I mean, it would be interesting to see a 1,700-year-old church, but, you know, gotta make room for progress, I guess. So originally, it was Donato Bramante who was hired to design the basilica, and he did a pretty brilliant job but unfortunately he died before it could really get going and that's the thing like when i say this building took 120 years to build i mean a lot of people are gonna die while this thing's being built um i mean to put it in perspective the empire state building i think took 18 months to build the great pyramid of giza i think took like 20 years this took 120 so yeah, I mean, it's got to be pretty crazy to imagine living in Rome at this time. You know, seeing this building be built your entire life, and then you die, and then your children get to see it being built their entire lives, and then they die. I mean, entire generations would have been born and died while this building was being constructed. So St. Peter's was just always there in the process of being built. It had to be an interesting feeling when it was finally completed. So they started building it in 1506, and it wasn't done until 1626. So, I mean, in that time period, like a dozen popes were elected. Um, entire wars were fought in Italy and even in Rome. Rome was actually sacked. And you had architects and artists just coming and going all the time. I mean, it was really a crazy crazy thing but that's kind of why it's such a magnificent building because you had all these great minds and all these great artists who would show up get hired and add their little bit to it like michelangelo had to come in he actually did not want to work on the building he had to basically come in because everybody was dead <laughs> like all the people who were working on it like um Raphael had taken over for a bit, but then he died young at 37, and so Michelangelo had to come in. And at the time, Michelangelo was in his 70s, so yeah, he was definitely not in a good mood about having to do this. But he wrote the only reason why he did this was because of his love for God and in order to honor the apostle St. Peter. So that was, uh, that was pretty interesting. But yeah, he had, to, he had a lot to deal with when he showed up. So when Michelangelo took over, he had a lot of work to do. He had to basically redesign the entire blueprint, basically, and stuff. And uh, he actually ended up designing the dome and just, yeah, he had, uh, he had uh, a lot to do. But by the time he was dead, St. Peter's wasn't even 
halfway built. I mean, there, this was just a very arduous, long process. And naturally, when I say it took 120 years to build, it wasn't being built that entire time. I mean, there were long periods of time where just nothing was going on. Because in order to get it built, it took somebody with a lot of money and a lot of power to get things going. Basically, to get the ball rolling, you know what I mean? So it would take the Pope, and then he would have to get money for it, and then he would have to get an architect, an artist, you know, just everything, just get everything going. And after a couple of years, that Pope would probably die, and the architect would die, and all the workers would die, and then... You know, another pope would have to come in and do the same thing all over again. Get an architect, get an artist, get everything going again. So that just kept happening over and over and over again for 120 years. So it's kind of amazing it got built at all. But that's just how important this building is to the Catholic Church. And rightfully so. I mean, this was built to be the church of all churches. And like I said earlier, it's pretty cool how different people would come in and add their own touch to it. Like Michelangelo did the dome. You had Carlo Moderno do the facade and the fountains. And then you had Bonini do the colonnade and a lot of stuff on the inside. I mean, Bonini was definitely a master. I mean, just wow. And all the stuff this guy did for the Basilica. I mean, hell, he designed the piazza too, which is pretty cool. Um... You may notice that there is a pointy thing in the middle of the piazza. That would be an obelisk nicknamed the Witness. Now, according to Christian tradition, that obelisk was in the center of the Circus of Nero, and so it actually bore witness to St. Peter's crucifixion. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool, and that's why they moved it to the center of the piazza, because it bore witness to St. Peter's death. Actually, that was a pretty major feat in of itself. I mean, that's a huge obelisk. It's like 83 feet tall. I mean, this thing's pretty damn big. And in fact, I think it's one of the largest obelisks in the entire world. And not to mention all the history that goes with it. I mean, geez, I think it was actually brought to Rome by Caesar Augustus after he conquered Egypt. And then, I mean, how many centuries was it in Egypt? I mean... A lot of history with this obelisk, so that's pretty freaking cool. You know, that's just one part of such a magnificent structure. There's just so much going on with St. Peter's Basilica on the inside. I mean, there's just some of the greatest pieces of art in human history. I mean, it's incredible. You have stuff by Michelangelo, Raphael, Bonini, just the great masters of the Renaissance. And you have all the relics of the church. I mean, there's just so much going on. I mean, just imagine being able to walk around there and also check out the archives and all the secret areas that the church has and stuff. I mean, it really would be a fascinating, fascinating place to go. And on the outside, St. Peter's Basilica is just, I mean, it's just a gorgeous building. And it's also massive. And it's interesting, too, because it's almost deceptively big. It doesn't really look as big as it really is. When it was finished in 1626, it was actually, I think, the second tallest building in the entire world, second only to the Great Pyramid of Giza, which I think was like 480 feet tall. When St. Peter's was finished, it was 448 feet tall, so... Almost as tall as the Great Pyramid of Giza, which had been the tallest building on Earth for about 4,000 years at this time. And in fact, the Great Pyramid of Giza wouldn't lose the title of tallest building in the world until the cathedral in Cologne was built. So it had a good run while it lasted. But yeah, St. Peter's is massive. I mean, you can hold tens of thousands of people in the piazza and then the dome itself is massive i remember running around and i think it was assassin's creed brotherhood and there was a mission where you were running around in the uh, dome of saint peter's while it was still being built and i remember running around on that level going man this thing is huge we we are really high up like geez i had no idea this uh, dome was this high up and just how big this building is i mean it was really like a surprise to me because it just i don't know maybe i'm crazy i just think it doesn't look as massive as it really is and that's another thing too 
According to some metrics, St. Peter's Basilica is the largest church in the entire world. So, yeah, there's a lot going on with this building inside and out, trust me. I mean, there's just, there's just so much to say about St. Peter's Basilica, and uh, I really had fun doing this model. And it was really, it was really cool. I mean, I really learned a lot, and it's like each part of this building has its own history, its own story to tell. And just imagining all the brilliant minds and all the amazing creative hands that work to build it. I mean, it's just, it's just really incredible. I mean, it's definitely one of the most amazing, beautiful, inspiring structures that mankind has ever built. So, yeah, <laughs> St. Peter's, it's, uh, it's pretty freaking cool. And uh, I really enjoyed the model itself, putting it together, and it definitely got me inspired to learn more about the building itself. So... I would definitely recommend going to see the real St. Peter's Basilica. I definitely want to go there one day. And, uh, you know, I think if uh, you have some kids or if you're just bored, need something to do with your hands, I would definitely recommend you check out Cubic Fun's model. They call it a puzzle, but it's really much more of a model. Like, I don't really see how it's a puzzle. First of all, puzzles don't come with instructions on how to put together, but, you know, whatever. But uh, anyway, yeah, check it out if you want to. It's uh, it's pretty fun doing this.